Hello, and welcome to this Anatomy Physiology Bio 202 video lecture on the reproductive system. I'm Mr. Kennedy, and I'll be your guide as we explore this topic together. As we begin, we'll introduce the male reproductive system. Its organs include the testes, ductus deferens, epididymis, ejaculatory duct, urethra, seminal vesicles, prostate, bubble urethral gland, scrotum, and penis. This graphic illustrates each of those organs in their correct anatomical location. Note the name and position of each labeled item. The same anatomical structures are listed here in a cadaver dissection. Again, note the name and location of each labeled item. The functions of the part of the system. The scrotum. The scrotum is a sac of loose skin and underlying subcutaneous tissue that contains the testes. Internally, it's separated into two compartments by the dartos muscle and subcutaneous layer. The testes are paired oval glands in the scrotum, partially covered by the tunica vaginalis. Internal to the tunica vaginalis is a connective tissue capsule the tunica, aboginia, that extends inward to form septa that create compartments. Seminiferous tubules carry sperm produced within them through a process known as spermatogenesis. This is a cross-section of the testes. This is the same structure, but in a cadaver dissection. Spermatogenesis begins with spermatogonia, or diploid stem cells, that differentiate into diploid primary spermatocytes, as seen here. The primary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis I to become two secondary spermatocytes, which are haploid cells containing half the genetic complement of the original spermatocyte. Meiosis II takes place and the secondary spermatocytes become four spermatids. That process is illustrated here. Sperm. Sperm are designed to reach and penetrate the secondary oocyte in order to achieve fertilization and create a zygote. The head contains a nucleus with 23 chromosomes. The acrosome covers the head and contains enzymes to help with penetration. The neck contains centrioles that form microtubules that make up the rest of the tail. The middle piece contains mitochondria that make ATP for locomotion of the sperm. The principal piece and end piece make up the tail used for movement. This diagram provides you the basic anatomy of a sperm cell. Hormones control testicular function. At puberty, gonadotropin releasing hormone, or GNRH, stimulates cells in the anterior pituitary gland to produce luteinizing hormone, or LH, and follicle stimulating hormone, also known as FSH. LH stimulates cells in the testes to produce testosterone, while FSH stimulates spermatogenesis. The feedback mechanisms and subsequent hormonal secretions are illustrated here in this flowchart. Testosterone and dihydrotestosterone produce several effects. Prenatal development, the development of male sexual se characteristics, the development of sexual function, the stimulation of anabolism. A negative feedback system controls the blood level of testosterone and is illustrated here. There is a system of ducts in the male reproductive system. Sperm and fluid travel from the seminiferous tubules to straight tubules and then to a network of ducts, the reet testes. Efferent ducts carry the sperm to the epididymis. Sperm mature here and degenerated sperm are reabsorbed. The epididymis propels sperm 
into the ductus or vas deferens. Those structures are illustrated here. The vas deferens exits the tail of the epididymis and ascends through the spermatic cord into the pelvis. It loops over the ureter and passes over the side and down the posterior surface of the urinary bladder. That is illustrated in this diagram. The spermatic cord ascends out of the scrotum and contains the ductus deferens, testicular artery, the veins draining the testes, the autonomic nerves, lymphatic vessels, and the cremaster muscle. The spermatic cord and ilolingual nerve pass through the inguinal canal, which originates in the deep inguinal ring and ends at the superficial inguinal ring. Those structures are illustrated here. The ejaculatory duct arise from the junction of the duct from the semi seminal vesicles and the ampulla of the ductus deferens. The urethra is the duct shared by the reproductive and urinary systems. Both semen and urine pass through it. It passes through the prostate gland, deep muscles of the peritoneum, and the penis. Those structures are illustrated here. Accessory glands. The seminal vesicles are considered accessory glands and secrete an alkaline, viscous fluid containing fructose, prostaglandins, and clotting proteins. The prostate is a single donut-shaped gland that secretes a milky, slightly acidic fluid containing citric acid, proteolytic enzymes, acid, phosphatase, and seminal plasmin. The Cowper's gland secretes an alkaline fluid during sexual arousal that neutralizes acids from urine and mucus for lubrication. Semen. Semen is a mixture of sperm and seminal fluid. The volume of an average ejaculate is 2.5 to 5 mils with between 50 and 150 million sperm per mil. The pH is 7.2 to 7.7. .7. The penis containing the urethra is the passageway for semen and urine and composed of three cylindrical masses, two corpa cavernosa and one corpus spongiosum. The glands is the head of the penis covered by the foreskin. This is a cross-sectional diagram of that structure. Next is the female reproductive system. The organs include the ovaries, uterine or fallopian tubes, sometimes called oviducts, the uterus, the vagina, and external organs. This is a diagram illustrating the organs of the female reproductive system. Note their name and proper location. Ovaries. The ovaries are paired glands homologous to the testes. They produce gametes, which mature into ova, and hormones, progesterone, estrogen, inhibin, and relaxin. They are supported by the broad ligament, ovarian ligament, and suspensory ligament. Here, they are illustrated in this diagram. Again, note the name and proper location of each labeled item. Histologically, ovaries consist of germinal epithelium, which covers their surface, the tunica albuginea, which is a capsule of dense irregular connective tissue below the germinal epithelium, the ovarian cortex below the tunica albuginea, which consists of ovarian follicles and stromal cells, the ovarian medulla, which is connective tissue, blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, and nerves. Ovarian follicles. Ovarian follicles contain oocytes in various stages of development. They also contain follicular cells and granulosal cells. 
a mature graphene follicle is ready to rupture and expel the secondary oocyte. A corpus luteum develops after ovulation when the empty follicle produces progesterone, estrogens, inhibin, and relaxin. This is a diagram illustrating each of the aforementioned structures. Formation of gametes in the ovaries is called oogenesis. It begins before a female is born with the process of meiosis. When primordial germ cells migrate from the yolk sac to the ovaries during fetal development, they differentiate into oogonia. Oogonia divide into germ cells, some of which become primary oocytes. Each is surrounded by follicular cells forming a primordial follicle. This is a diagram of that structure. Each month after puberty, FSH and LH stimulate the development of the primordial follicles. Only one usually reaches maturity. A few start to grow, developing into primary follicles. This is an illustration of a primary follicle. In later stages of development, the primary oocyte is surrounded by several layers of cuboidal and low columnar cells, also known as granulosa cells. The glycoprotein zona pellucidia forms between the primary oocyte and the granulosa cells. As maturation continues, the primary follicle develops into a secondary follicle. The theca folliculi forms from stromal cells. Here we have a secondary follicle. And this, again, is a secondary follicle under a light microscope. In a secondary follicle, the theca differentiates into the theca interna and theca externa. The innermost layer of granulosa cells becomes the corona radiata. The secondary follicle becomes a mature graphene follicle. This is an illustration of a mature graphene follicle. And this is the ovarian cortex under light microscope. While in the mature follicle, the diploid primary oocyte completes meiosis I, producing a haploid secondary oocyte with the majority of the cytoplasm and a haploid first polar body. At ovulation, both cells and the corona radiata enter the uterine tube. If sperm are present and fertilization takes place, the secondary oocyte continues into meiosis II. An ovum and a second polar body form. The ovum becomes a zygote when it unites with the sperm. This is an illustration of the phases of division that lead to the formation of a zygote in the female reproductive system. Females have two uterine or fallopian tubes, also known as oviducts, that extend from the uterus. The tubes are the pathway for sperm to reach the ovum and for the secondary oocytes and fertilized ova to travel to the uterus. The end of the tube is the infundulum. Fimbrae project from it. The ampulla is the widest portion of the tube. Each of those structures is illustrated in this diagram. The uterine tubes have three layers, mucosa, muscularis, and serosa. The simple, ciliated columnar epithelium of the mucosa contains cilia that move the fertilized ovum or secondary oocyte towards the uterus. Peg cells in the tube secrete a fluid providing nourishment for the ovum. The uterus is part of the pathway for sperm deposited in the vagina to reach the uterine tube. 
it is the site of implantation of the fertilized ovum, development of the fetus during pregnancy, and labor. The top of the uterus is referred to as the fundus. The central portion is the body. The inferior extension into the vagina is the cervix. The isthmus is between the body and the cervix. The interior of the body is the uterine cavity. The interior of the cervix is the cervical canal. The opening of the canal into the uterus is the internal os. The opening of the canal into the vagina is the external os. Histologically, there are three layers to the uterus. The serosa or parametrium is the outermost layer. The middle layer is the myometrium, consisting of three layers of smooth muscle. The endometrium is the inner layer. Its stratum functionalis layer is shed each month during menstruation. The stratum basalis layer is permanent and gives rise to a new stratum functionalis after each menstruation. This is a representation of the layers of the uterus as seen through a light microscope. Branches of the iliac artery, called the uterine arterioles, supply blood to the uterus. Uterine arteries give rise to accurate arteries that feed the myometrium. These branch into radial arteries that go deep into the myometrium. Straight arterioles supply the stratum basalis. The blood supply to the uterus is illustrated here. Secretory cells of the cervix produce cervical mucus, which is chemically more hospitable to sperm during ovulation because it's less viscous and more alkaline. It also helps to nourish sperm. It may aid in capacitation, functional changes in sperm that allow them to fertilize a secondary oocyte. The vagina. The vagina is a fibromuscular canal lined with mucus that extends from the body's exterior to the cervix. The mucosa of the vagina is continuous with that of the uterus. The epithelium and areolar connective tissue of the vagina lie in a series of transverse folds called rugae. The muscularis is composed of an outer circular layer and inner longitudinal layer of smooth muscle. This allows the vagina to stretch during intercourse and childbirth. The hymen is a thin fold of vascularized mucous membrane that partially closes the inferior end of the vagina. The skein's glands. Skein's glands secrete mucus and are embedded in the wall of the urethra. They are homologous to the prostate. Bartholin's glands produce mucus during sexual arousal to provide lubrication. They are homologous with the bubble urethral gland. The bulb of the vestibule has two masses of erectile tissue that engorges during sexual arousal to narrow the vaginal orifice, applying pressure to the penis during intercourse. This is homologous to the erectile tissues of the penis. This table will provide a summary of the homologous structures of the female and male reproductive systems. The mammary glands. The mammary glands are located in each of the two breasts. They are modified sweat glands that produce milk. Mammary glands contain 15 to 30 lobes. Each lobe has lobules containing milk secreting glands called alveoli. Each breast has a nipple containing lactiferous ducts where milk emerges. The skin around the nipple is the areola. Non-pregnant females experience cyclical changes in the ovaries and uterus. Each cycle takes approximately one month. The cycle involves oogenesis and preparation by the uterus to receive a fertilized ovum. The ovarian cycle includes changes that occur during and after maturation of the oocyte. 
the uterine cycle involves changes in the endometrium that prepare it for implantation of the developing embryo. GnRH from the hypothalamus controls both the ovarian and uterine cycles. This diagram illustrates the events leading up to the secretion of the estrogens, progesterone, relaxin, and inhibin. Phases. The cycle generally ranges from 24 to 36 days and is divided into four phases, the menstrual, preovulatory, ovulation, and post-ovulatory phases. This diagram illustrates each phase in a graphic sense, also indicating the changes in the uterus as well as the development of the egg. And this graph illustrates the hormonal changes that will occur along the same time frame. Feedback is important in regulating hormonally controlled cycles. The high levels of estrogen during the last part of the preovulatory phase have a positive feedback effect on cells secreting LH and GnRH, thus bringing about ovulation. There are many hormonal interactions between the ovarian and uterine cycles. This graphic illustrates those connections. And finally, this graph illustrates the connections that lead up to the changes that are seen through the menstrual cycle. And this concludes our coverage of the male and female reproductive systems.